Hello there everyone, UXW Bill here once again with another computer video featuring a Dell Optiplex GX620 small form factor desktop style computer. Now if you didn't watch the video immediately prior to this one where I talked about this and several other computers that I recently acquired, I'll go ahead and give you a quick recap here. This is a cute little machine in really above average condition. Usually when I see these machines on the second-hand market, they have significant scuffing on the sides of their cases and scratching as well. This one is very clean on the sides. It's very clean somewhere else, too. There's a front-mounted microprocessor fan up here that cools the uh, system microprocessor and also the north bridge on the chipset. These usually plug with dust very quickly, and yet, as you can see, this is pretty much perfectly clean. So what about this machine is odd? Well, the note that was attached to it by the person who sold it to me, it goes ahead and gives some of the hardware specifics, shows you that there's an 80 gigabyte hard drive installed, two gigabytes of DDR2 memory, four 512 megabyte modules, and a Pentium 4 microprocessor of some unknown type. But the really interesting thing is noted down here, says does not boot, only growls. Well, I went ahead and popped this system open earlier, and that's shown in the previous video. If you haven't watched it yet and want to go see it at some point, you definitely should. And I found four bloated capacitors on the motherboard. But I can't think of any reason why that would lead this system to produce a growling noise when it operates. It might very well keep it from passing the power on self-test. But I really can't fathom a reason why it should growl, unless maybe there's bad fan bearings or something going on. So for your viewing pleasure, I'm just going to go ahead and hook this thing up. I've got a handy uh, test monitor here. I'm going to hook it up to the monitor. Go ahead and fasten that down. I don't always do that when I'm just test benching computers, but what the heck. You know, it's the right thing to do, and <laughs> I, I should always be a good example on YouTube, though sometimes I'm definitely not. Go ahead and plug this in. I heard a little click there, but nothing interesting has happened so far. See if I can turn this around where we can see the front panel indicators. Dell provides a very nice feature on these machines. All of these Optiplex systems of this vintage, and I believe the current generation as well, have somewhere on the case a series of test indicator lights as well as a LAN indicator light that indi indicates when the computer has established, uh, successfully established a link to an Ethernet network of some sort. These lights on the front of the computer can be used to determine the nature of a failure even if the computer can't get the video subsystem started. So let's go ahead and power this thing up. Completely unrehearsed, let's just see what happens here. I, I can't wait to hear if this thing actually growls or not. <laughs> Hopefully it won't go pop or foom or bang because you might hear some bad words if I do. Okay. Well, there's your growling noise. It's just a low, constant drone from the internal system speaker. It's definitely kind of bizarre. I wonder what that could mean. Definitely doesn't seem to be uh, getting any startup, or at least getting very far into the power on self-test, because we have no front panel lights, and the monitor itself remains completely in standby. Even more interestingly, well, nope. Nope, the power control logic appears to be functioning because I was able to turn it off. I don't know if this is a byproduct of those bad capacitors. But for you, the troubleshooter at home, since I have been asked about this in the past by some people, if you ever have a computer that acts completely dead like this one does at the moment, whether it happens to growl or does not, you can do a very effective job of diagnosing it by simplifying the configuration as much as possible. Removing all but one memory module, or if your system requires more than one memory module, leaving only the minimum required in place for it to start, removing any expansion cards that are installed, and disconnecting things such as hard, floppy, and optical drives from the system to see if it powers up. That's what I'm going to go ahead and do with this machine. All right, folks, as promised, a quick update on the status of this Dell Optiplex GX620 small form factor personal computer system. As you can see, it has come to life. And the cure was a lot simpler than I thought it might be. I was really wondering if maybe these bad capacitors had had some significant impact on the motherboard. 
because if you let those go unchecked for long enough, they will break things eventually, and break things that um, aren't so nearly aren't nearly so easy to fix. But in this case, the cause was very simple. As usual, it's the simplest things that bring a complex machine, such as this personal computer, to its knees. Dust in the memory slots, if you can believe it. I went ahead and blew it out just now. Had to treat some of the slots more than once before I finally got it all out of there. It was just barely noticeable down in the bottom of those slots, but when I did, the system came to life. And as I got more of the memory slots cleaned up, I was eventually able to repopulate all the modules. Now, as you can see, it's not very happy because the uh, floppy diskette drive, the hard drive, the optical drive, all that stuff are out of it, and the keyboard's not presently plugged in. Let's go ahead and see if this thing's BIOS is smart enough to accept a hot plugging of a USB keyboard and if it'll actually let me in to the system setup utility. Well, it doesn't look like it's that smart, so we'll go ahead and just turn it off, start it over here. That power supply is surprisingly nice in that the fan inside of it actually moves a pretty decent amount of air through it. See if we can get into setup here. It's going to actually let me do that. Yep, there we go. System setup. See if it's recognizing all that memory. Yep, 2 gigabytes, 533 megahertz clocked, interleaved. So everything definitely seems to be working now. Well, there you have it. So thank you once again for watching, and feel free to leave a comment if you have one. There'll probably be a future video where I replace the capacitors in this machine, because that definitely still needs to be done before something really does break for good.